In my previous video about the ill-fated Ocean Gate Titan submersible, I created a cross-sectional view of what all the parts were and their basic functions as far as I was able to ascertain. I also presented my theory of how I think the vessel may have failed. There were many great discussions in the comments section, and while I don't think the scenario I presented is completely impossible, it's probably not the most plausible either. Due to the immense water pressure compressing the titanium bits to the cylindrical carbon fiber hull. It is difficult to know how carbon fiber will react in such an environment in which it is not ordinarily used. What I do know is that the tensile strength is very high, but it's not very good in compression. I am aware of the various computer simulations proving that the carbon fiber tube imploded, but I just don't feel it's that cut and dry or that these simulations are completely unbiased. I still believe there must have been a chain of events, uh, the perfect storm, if you will, for this to have happened. For someone that knows anything about carbon fiber, it's obvious that the unidirectional windings made around a spandrel to a certain thickness is just not going to yield the strongest possible cylinder. Also, a non-homogeneous marriage of carbon fiber with its high modulus of elasticity paired with titanium's low modulus of, of elasticity isn't a great idea, and it's probably asking for trouble. So, after pondering these things further, I arrived at a new theory. Before we get to that, one thing I failed to mention in previous videos is that there was a horizontal brace along the sides of the hole, which I assumed also attached the interface rings. I don't know if that was also a structural component, but it certainly was an attachment point for the white exterior shell. You can see some of that frame network here. Note that there are substantial members connecting the legs together under the hull. So here's the Titan submersible in its normal diving configuration with the skid frame, also known as the weight carriage, still attached, along with the necessary ballast to make a descent. Let's assume for the sake of argument that the leaked transcript mostly follows actual events. They discovered that they were diving too fast. A decision was made to abort the dive at 3,500 meters, a depth that they reached in only 90 minutes versus the normal two and a half hours. There was some sort of impetus to get back to the surface ASAP. In order to do so, the skid frame aka weight carriage had to be jettisoned, which was an actual emergency protocol. I don't know how much that weight carriage assembly weighed, but it had to be fairly substantial as it had to support the weight of the 21,000 pound sub when docked, plus the added weight of the ballast. Per a former Ocean Gate engineer, Bruce Morton, provisions were made to be able to release the frame, aka weight carriage, using four hydraulically operated pin removers by means of a hydraulic pump. If still more weight was needed to be dropped, the four legs into which the frame inserted could also be dropped and using pneumatically operated actuators by means of an air pump. Let's suppose in a panic, the decision was made to release everything at once instead of in sequence, weight carriage first, then the leg. What happens if either of those systems fails or gets waterlogged? or the components are just really stuck together from corrosion, or they get entangled because this was done out of sequence. Because of the statement multiple attempts were needed to drop the frame, it leads me to believe that it may have still been hanging on to the sub as they were trying to quickly ascend. That would leave it hanging somehow in an awkward position. This in turn would upset the balance of the sub. Since there were blocks of syntactic foam in the tail cone assembly, this would make the tail some degree more positively buoyant than the front. The ha partially hanging frame assembly would be inducing some amount of stress on the front titanium interface ring while the top of the carbon fiber hull is being compressed more than it normally would be, with the lower half being in a state of somewhat greater tension than normal. Of course, in reality, it's much more complicated than that. The compression tension ratio would be on a complex gradient, but I think you get the idea. There would be an asymmetrical distribution of forces in addition to whatever forces the immense water pressure imposes on the hull. Now I'm thinking that shear currents could have possibly come into play here too. Um, it could have put some kind of additional twisting force on a partially hanging weight carriage assembly and maybe stressed one side more than the other, applied some kind of twisting motion, uh, you know, it's, it would be a very complex dynamic situation. 
And my point is that the ocean is not static like a fish tank. In reality, it's much more complex than that. Now, since the carbon fiber was unidirectional, I don't think it would take that much stress to exceed what the carbon fiber could handle, especially if the safety margin was very small. Perhaps what happened is that the front end of the carbon tube started to buckle. The fibers started to delaminate and perhaps the glue joint at the front interface ring was already weakened from previous expeditions and it couldn't take the sheer force of that. And so a very violent implosion ensued as a result of this simultaneous failure. This seems to be a realistic, plausible scenario. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.